So this is a brief, a brief history of space travel. So a really quick run through the history of space travel, spe focused on America, mostly focused on what we did here in America. All right, so to, to start off, people have thought about space travel for a long time. So that would take, be a whole talk on itself, people thinking about space travel. But here's a couple people that thought about space travel before we did it. How many people have heard of Johannes Kepler? Okay, he was, he's a spacecraft now too, right? He's, Kepler studies exoplanets, planets around other stars. But he was a guy back in the 1600s who did some important work in learning how planets orbit things, how planets orbit stars, especially in our own solar system. And so he wrote a bunch of books about his physics, but he also wrote a fun book. Some people consider it the first work of sci-fi called the Somnium. Somnium comes from Latin for sleep, or so the sleep or the dream. And so he talked about a, a travel to the moon. He talked about a trip to the moon. This is back in 1630. Galileo is still living. 1630, he talks about going to the moon and walking around on the moon. This is kind of crazy and, and a really revolutionary idea for his time. And the way he got there, the way that he suggested, or in his book we get there, is that someone went and talked to a demon, and the demon transported them to the moon, and they walked around on the moon. Now that's, that's all fine and dandy, but then maybe because of that, his mom ends up getting charged with witchcraft in Germany. And so he has to, he's in the strange position of having to defend his mother in court against charges of witchcraft. Not a lot of astronomers have to do that. But he, it, he's a good lawyer too. He got his, his mom off and his book is remembered as the first work of sci-fi. So Jules Verne, 1865, several hundred years later, it talks about a somewhat more practical approach. He talks about putting people in a cannon. He says that put them in basically this giant cannonball and put it inside a cannon and then blast off the cannon into space and they'll get to the moon that way. That makes quite a bit of sense. Now the exact design of that would have killed everybody on board. They would have been, their brains would have been turned to liquid. But the idea is right, that you, you're shooting people into space in that way. Okay, the actual first steps towards space travel happened in the 20th century. So the actual first object in space was one of these, a German V2 rocket. So these were designed by the Nazis in Nazi Germany, and they were used as weapons. These are, these are missiles. And 1942 was the first one which was launched into space. Space is usually considered an altitude of about 62 miles. So the, the, the air just gets thinner and thinner as you go up, about 62 miles up, that's considered space. So the, a, this weapon was the first thing that actually went into space, and they shot a lot of these at England. All right, so we defeat the Nazis in 1945, the war is over, and we get all their stuff. We've invaded Germany, and we get all their stuff. We bring some of their scientists back, including Werner von Braun, one of the, the foremost rocket scientists who used to work for the Nazis, and we get a lot of their rockets. And so we learn a lot, we make a lot of progress just by taking what they had discovered in Nazi Germany. Okay, so we, we are using these in the 40s into the 50s. We're testing putting these rockets into space. The Soviet Union is also trying to do that. And so the, the Soviet Union actually takes the first big step of putting the first man-made satellite into space. So the first thing that humans made that orbits the Earth is Sputnik, launched October 4th, 1957. So that was a big deal. It sent, these are radio transmitters, so it sends back a radio signal and it orbits the Earth. That's the big first step. Okay, so the next step after that is putting living things into space. The first humans were in space in 1961. 1961 is when the first humans went into space. Uh, the first human in space was Yuri Gagarin, who was a Soviet cosmonaut. About a month later, though, the first American went into space, Alan Shepard. Now, he didn't go into orbit. He just went up into space and then came back down. This is the rocket. This is the rocket he was on. This was part of what's called the Mercury program. The Mercury program. And this, so you may remember the challenge of President Kennedy about this time to put a man on the moon. So that was divided into three steps. The first step was the Mercury program. The second step was the Gemini program. The third step was the Apollo program that actually landed men on the moon. So this was part of the Mercury program where we first start putting living things and then humans 
into space. So Alan Shepard is the first American to ever go into space. John Glenn was the first American to orbit, to go into orbit around the Earth. Okay, the Gemini program was designed to go into orbit and test out various space procedures which were necessary in order to land on the moon. And so as part of the Gemini program, Ed White, astronaut Ed White, did the first extravehicular activity, the first spacewalk ever. A human being just in a spacesuit out there in orbit above the Earth, he did that, tested out how that went. All right, this is a, a stunning picture taken by Apollo 8 in 1968. This is Christmas Eve of 1968. Apollo 8 is, doesn't land on the moon, but it orbits the moon. And as they come around the side of the moon, they see Earth rise. And this is the surface of the moon. They're looking at our planet off there in the distance. Apollo 11, Apollo 11 in July 20th, 1969 is the first time that humans ever stepped on the moon. This is Neil Armstrong, of course, the first man on the moon. Buzz Aldrin, the second man on the moon, just about ready to step onto the moon. And you know the words he said that this is one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. So he steps onto the surface. There goes on to be five more moon landings between 1969 and December of 1972. We landed on the moon six times altogether. It would have been seven had Apollo 13 not failed. So I have a little video here of getting ready to land on the moon that I wanted to show you because it's pretty exciting. On the left here, you're seeing the view from the, the lander. On the right here, you're seeing the view from orbit. So the part of the spacecraft stayed in orbit around the moon while the actual lander, while the lunar excursion module went down to the surface. So you're seeing these craters close up on the surface. Okay, so you're able to hear them. When they were coming down, you were able to hear them. They're describing everything as they're getting ready for landing. They actually, Neil Armstrong ha was the pilot, and he had to overfly where they were planning to land. And so everybody was getting really, really scared because they had 30 seconds of fuel left. He had to be down in 30 seconds, or else they were going to have to abort. And how terrible would that be? They put all this effort in. They're at the moon. They're a couple hundred feet above the moon. If they run out of fuel, they have to abort because they, they're not going to let the astronauts die. They're not going to let them crash. So if they run out of fuel, they're going to have to reascend, go, go back to the orbiter. They were so close. They were getting so close. He looks down at where they were supposed to land. He sees it's full boulders. He knows he can't land safely there, so he flies beyond that. Everybody's getting scared back on the Earth, but then he gets down. You can't really hear it in their voices too much until the end there when uh, Gene Krantz, the director, says well, there's a bunch of guys about to turn blue here. Everybody was getting really, really nervous whether they were going to make it. And of course, the first thing that Neil Armstrong says from the surface is, Tranquility Base here, the eagle has landed. And he calls it Tranquility Base because they landed in the Sea of Tranquility. There's these things called the Lunar Maria, the seas. They're, they're not actually full of water, they're full of volcanic rock. But they landed in the Sea of Tranquility. So he, he, Neil Armstrong thought that up right there, Tranquility Base. And that's his stock, Tranquility Base, the eagle has landed.